Next up, I'm going to talk about a test concerning a population proportion, which for what it's worth was the very first example in this chapter. Uh, we saw a small sample test for population proportions. Uh, this was the example where I was uh, shooting baskets and I was going to shoot 20 baskets and you were going to decide whether I was an 80% free throw shooter or not. And when I say not, I mean specifically that I make less than 80% of my baskets. Uh, when our data follows uh, a Bernoulli distribution, uh, we, are, uh, we can talk about uh, the following null alternative hypotheses. Uh, the null hypothesis says that uh, P, the, uh, the proportion because our data is IID and following a Bernoulli distribution uh, with parameter P, and under the null hypothesis, P is equal to some quantity P naught. And under the alternative, we could have uh, maybe uh, P is less than P naught, or we could have that uh, P is not equal to P naught. This is a two-sided alternative. And uh, we could have that uh, P is greater than P naught. Uh, then we identify the distribution of the number of successes in the sample if the null hypothesis is true. Uh, the distribution of S is going to be a binomial distribution uh, with um, parameters N and P naught. Okay, uh, so once we've done that, we can provide formulas for computing P values. And you can pretty much reason through most of these and see uh, how they relate to what we were getting uh, or what we were doing in example one. So uh, we will use um, lowercase s to mean the number of successes. And uh, we could have the alternative that uh, p is less than p naught, uh, in which case the p value is going to be uh, the CDF of a binomial random variable at S uh, with the uh, parameters N and P naught. If we have our alternative hypothesis be that P is not equal to P naught, then our, our P value is going to be, hold on, uh, I didn't write that very well. Uh, our P value will be two times the smaller of the of these two numbers uh, b s uh, n p naught and one minus b uh, n minus s uh, n p naught pick the smaller of those that will be your p value and then finally, for the alternative hypothesis, um, finally for the alternative hypothesis that p is greater than p naught, uh, our p value will be uh, one minus b. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, this this formula right here is not quite right. Uh, this should be s minus one. Sorry. Uh, here we have b. Uh, S minus one, uh, N P naught. All right, so these are our P values. Okay, uh, and th so that was what we had before, and we've already seen an example of uh, doing a statistical test in the small sample context. Here I wanna consider a large sample version of the test. So we're going to consider the sample proportion P hat computed from Bernoulli data. Uh, assume that under the null hypothesis, assume that the null hypothesis that p equals p naught is true. What then will be the expected value and variance of our statistic p hat? Well, the expected value of p hat is going to be uh, p naught. Because under the null hypothesis, the true proportion p is p naught. P hat is the sample mean, and uh, the the mean of the data is going to be p, which is <laughs> Sorry, uh, which is p naught. So the variance of p hat is going to be uh, p naught times one minus p naught 
uh, divided by the sample size n. And you can recognize this as being uh, as a being the variance of a Ber Bernoulli random variable when the true parameter value is p0 divided by the sample size. So based off of this, what is the approximate distribution of p hat for large n? For this, we're going to use the, the central limit theorem and say that p hat is following approximately a normal distribution with mean p0 and standard deviation square root p0 1 minus p0 over n. Okay, and based off of this, uh, we can create a large sample test uh, for the sample for uh, uh, using the sample proportion uh, for the population proportion. I'm going to replace this with population because I don't like how that's written. Uh, like so. Uh, our test statistic will be uh, p hat minus p naught divided by the square root of p naught uh, 1 minus p naught over n. Uh, we have the alternative hypothesis that uh, p is less than p naught. In that situation, the p value is going to be uh, the CDF of a standard normal random variable at z. In the case uh, where p is greater than p naught, then the p value is going to be uh, 1 minus phi at z. And uh, for the alternative that p is not equal to p naught, uh, we're going to have uh, the p value uh, be 2 times 1 minus phi at the absolute value of z. Okay, um, notice that essentially p-values are computed exactly the same as we, they were in the z-test uh, because this is essentially the z-test. There's really very little difference. It's just you compute your z-statistics slightly different. In fact, um, and uh, if you're in my class, this might be relevant to you because I've asked quizzes that have, that have involved this. Um, uh, it's reasonable to uh, extend the z-test to other types of statistics by using the central limit theorem. So if we have an estimator that's consistent for theta and it has and it follows um, uh, some central limit theorem, um, if we have that this uh, quantity which is that the that the statistic theta hat minus theta divided by uh, the standard error of the statistic theta hat, that this is approximately a z-distribution, that this follows approximately a z-distribution or a standard normal distribution, we can test the null hypothesis theta against theta equals theta naught against any alternative using uh, the statistic z, which is theta hat minus theta naught divided by the standard error of theta hat, uh, where the standard error of theta hat may be dependent on what the null hypothesis is. Uh, so in this particular example, sigma p hat was the square root of n p naught uh, times 1 minus p naught. Uh, hold on, that's uh, not quite, that's not written down quite right. It should be p naught times 1 minus p naught uh, over n. So that's all inside a square root. And that produces a large sample test statistic. So you end up with, um, this is also going to be largely true for um, I would say like a lot of those, um, uh, uh, method of moments estimators, since they involve sample means, a lot of them are, are, uh, invoking, are able to be analyzed via the central limit theorem. So you get to have something like that too. So yeah, we actually can get a lot of tests for a lot of parameter values, uh, using, uh, this using the method that was uh, illustrated here. So here are some uh, large sample type 2 error analysis formulas uh, because we care about type 2 error analysis. Suppose uh, we have the alternative hypothesis that p is less than p naught. We have some input so the true uh, p under the, the alternative hypothesis uh, we're going to say that is p prime. 
in, in the first case, beta at p uh, prime is equal to one minus b, uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, p naught minus uh, p prime uh, minus z alpha times the square root of p naught one minus p naught uh, over n, and this is all divided by the square root of p prime times one minus p prime, excuse me, over n. Okay, so this is our first formula. Uh, I'm actually gonna wanna zoom in for this because these, these are uh, long and complicated formulas. So let's suppose that the alternative hypothesis now is that P is uh, greater than P naught, then the uh, power function at P prime is going to be phi of uh, P naught minus P prime uh, plus Z alpha times the square root of P naught times one minus P naught over N, but that's in the, but that is in the root. And this is all divided by uh, the square root of P prime times one minus P prime uh, divided by N. Okay, uh, and then finally we have, uh, let's uh, coordinate this region off the case where the alternative hypothesis is two-sided, so p is not equal to p naught, then the power function at p prime is going to be phi uh, p naught uh, minus p prime. Uh, plus z alpha over 2 times the square root of uh, p naught. Oh, I'm not going to have room. So I'm going to say, I, I'm just going to have to put this on separate lines. All right, so writing that again, unfortunately. So we got uh, p naught uh, minus p prime plus z alpha over two, uh, square root p naught, one minus p naught over n, uh, all over the square root of p prime, one minus p prime over n. Okay, uh, minus b, p naught minus p prime, uh, minus z alpha over two, that's like the only difference, <laughs> times the square root of p naught, one minus p naught over n. Uh, and then all of this is divided by the square root of p prime, one minus p prime over n. All right. Okay, uh, now uh, for sample size formulas. Uh, because we care about uh, getting appropriate sample sizes. So sample size and this is when beta of p prime so our type 2 error rate for our desired p prime is equal to beta then n our sample size is going to be one of two things. Uh, we're going to have in the case of a one sample test uh, z alpha times the square root of p naught one minus p naught uh, plus z beta uh, times the square root of p prime one minus p prime uh, all divided by p prime minus p naught squared. And this is a case for a one tail test. Uh, now for the two tail test, we have um, z alpha over two times the square root of p naught, one minus p naught 
uh, plus z beta times the square root of z prime one minus z prime no 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 not z prime that's not a thing uh p prime sorry uh p prime one minus p prime all of this divided by p prime minus p naught squared this is for the two-tailed test All right, uh, let's see an example. All right, uh, Jack Johnson and John Jackson are running for president of Earth. You work for the Johnson campaign and want to determine whether Johnson is currently the candidate with the most support. You plan on conducting a survey asking potential voters who they plan to vote for in the election. Um, <coughs> sorry. Let up. Oh, my throat is starting to tickle. I think I'm talking too much. Uh, let P represent the proportion of potential voters who support Johnson. Uh, state an appropriate null alternative hypothesis. If the if the two candidates are tied, then the probability that someone supports uh, Johnson is going to be 0.5, since the, it, uh, under this model, if they don't support Johnson, then they support uh, Jackson. This, of course, is not a completely... This is not a great way to... Um, understand elections in the real world since there are generally more than one candidate running even in uh, electoral systems that tend to support two parties only um, but uh, we're just going to use a simplified model so under the alternative p is greater than 0.5 and here we translate uh, success to mean uh, supporting johnson Hence the form of the alternative. And we are only interested in uh, we are only interested in uh, um, in whether Johnson is winning and not in just uh, any like whether the true proportion is not 0.5 and whether someone is winning. Okay, uh, you want to be able to detect when Johnson has a 1% lead among potential voters with a probability of 95%. Uh, find a sample size capable of achieving this when your significance level is alpha equals 0 0.5. Uh, so, um, in this situation, Z uh, 0 0.05 is equal to 1.645. And this is going to be both Z alpha and Z beta. Okay, uh, P prime, the true proportion under the alternative is going to be 0.505 because that is what translates to a 1% lead. Because then the difference between P prime and one minus P prime is going to be, uh, point, is going to be 0 0.01 because 0 0.505 minus 0.495 is 0 0.01. Uh, and I actually think that I made a mistake uh, when I initially wrote these notes and said that P prime was 0.51. And so that means that some of the numbers don't quite match up. And also the R code is a little bit off, but it's it should be e pretty easy to fix. So uh, according to the sample size formula that we have, uh, the appropriate sample size is going to be 1.645 times the square root of 0.5 squared plus uh, 1.645 times the square root of uh, 0.505 times 0.495. Uh, and then all of this is divided by 0 0.005 and then you square and then you round up. This is going to be uh, 108,235.6, which rounds up to 108,236. Although by that point, you know, you're rounding up, but you're already got an enormous amount of power. Uh, it turns out that Johnson's very rich and he can afford to conduct a survey of um, a, a survey with size. 
Uh, not the size that I listed. Uh, um, so, uh, so in not not the not the size that I listed before. Um, but uh, a survey with sixty one thousand people. So, uh, out of those people, three thirty thousand six hundred ninety eight said they were planning on voting for Johnson. So let's now compute the p value. So p hat is going to be approximately uh, 0.5032, since this is equal to uh, 30,698 divided by 61,000. Uh, so uh, our test statistic Z is going to be 0.5032 uh, minus 0.5 divided by the square root of 0.5 squared over 61,000, which is about uh, 1.60. So that means that our p value is going to be uh, 1 minus phi at um, 1.60, which is equal to 0 0.055. Now, this is one of those situations where your p-value is technically greater than alpha. So since our p-value is greater than our significance level alpha, which is 0.05, we should not reject the null hypothesis. But, but, this p-value is very close to um, the, the uh, uh, to our significance level. So you might actually want to investigate a little bit further and not be so, and not be so sure that the null hypothesis is is um, well that you that you shouldn't reject the null hypothesis. You might actually say that um, there's somewhat decent evidence that uh, Johnson has a lead. Uh, it's it's not great, but it's okay. And here is some Arco that's doing a similar thing at this point. It's somewhat uninteresting, except maybe for this part, uh, where I just uh, use the prop test function. Under the null hypothesis, p is equal to 0 0.5. The alternative is greater, and uh, I don't do a continuity correction. I think there's an option to do a continuity correction. Uh, so, um, and uh, they get a pretty similar result. Um, I think they're... Uh, Oh, they're using a different test though. It looks to me like the test that's being used here is something resembling the chi-square test. So it's not exactly the test that we're doing, which is interesting. Okay, uh, that's it though uh, for uh, now. Um, that's it for section four. And actually, yeah, so the next section is just talking about some more issues involving hypothesis testing. Uh, so uh, you can join me there to uh, learn a little bit more and this will be the last section of the Math 3070 course as it currently stands. You know, maybe in the future I will record videos for chapter 9, uh, but I've already been like, like just sprinting through chapters 1 through 8 over these past few weeks and my class is not going to talk about chapter 9, so I'm tired. I don't want to record those videos. I've got other things to do in my life. So, um, uh, all right, I will see you in a second.